What's going on everyone? Charlie here. Um, I'm going to bring this relevant video. I'll put this together for you real quick. Just going to go over five things that are used as far as psychological tactics to get you to think the way they want you to think. So we're going to talk about psychological warfare, planting seeds for the illusion of choice, which is exactly what's happening right now in the social media community. Now, remember, this is war. This is real. I mean, I, I know I say that a lot, but it's the fact of the th of the reality is that this is war. And just because we're not bearing arms and running out in a field somewhere doesn't mean that they can't use warfare tactics against us, which that's what they've been doing. So psychological warfare is the planned tactical use of propaganda, threats, other non-combat techniques during wars, threats of war, or in our case, periods of geopolitical unrest to mislead, intimidate, demoralize, or otherwise influence the thinking or behavior of an enemy, which in this case is the retail trader. So the propaganda is the fake news. The threats are the harassment of others uh, you know, for disagreeing with the narrative. And then, of course, we have the primary objective, influence the thinking or behavior of retail traders. Psychological warfare is a broad term, but in all documented cases, the concept uses actions intended to reduce an opponent's morale or mental well-being, which is what you see happening throughout the community, at least on social media like Twitter, Reddit, um, even YouTube, because there's an algo that controls the overall sentiment. Now, this is what is being attempted now. This is real. This is war. Keep that in mind. So, psychological tactics. We're going to help you better understand the tactics being used against you so that you can ascend to a state of awareness and rise above the narratives. We're going to look at five psychological tactics used specifically for social media to manipulate the thoughts and actions of others. And this is highly recommended marketing techniques as well. So this applies outside of the situation too. If you're watching TV, things like that, it applies there as well. So psychological tactic number one, color psychology. Social media is highly visual and the psychology surrounding colors is frequently used. These meanings generally hold true depending on the tone and imagery used. So for red, generally speaking, Passion, anger, intensity, heightened emotional and physical state. Yellow, joy, serenity, happiness, and ecstasy. Blue, trustworthiness, approachable, sad, soothing. Green, luck, prosperity, money, conservativeness, and success. And then purple, intellectual, problem solving, regal, special, and lux. And then here's a little color wheel here with the different emotions that's tied to them. That's tactic number one. We see it used all over the place. Tactic number two is called social proof. And this is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, it's proof that people like what you do. Social proof comes in the form of reviews and testimonials, as well as the number of social media followers and engagement someone may have. Social proof is smart psychological marketing trick because it helps to pre-sell your audience. When people see that others trust and like you, they are more compelled to take action when they see one of your social media posts. That action might be to learn more about your service or to purchase your product. This is why I've always said all year, I don't care how many followers you have. I don't care how long you've been in the industry. I don't care how popular you are. It does not matter. If you're wrong, you're wrong. This should not influence people's decisions. And here's an example. Um, you, know, you see it all the time on TV and everything. You know, you see a testimonial, like you, you're wondering if a product is good or not. Then you see the testimonial, oh, this is great. And then it's like, Joanne, that's basically it. That's not really any evidence that it's a good product. You're just taking the psychological trick and taking it as fact, which it's a very, very common thing that happens. So don't take someone else's word for anything, especially in the markets. Psychological tactic number three, amplification hypothesis. The amplification hypothesis means that if you display certainty when you say something, people are more likely to believe you. On social media, boring content gets ignored, like mine, and being wishy-washy, uncertain, or vague is really boring. On the flip side, if you share your stance on a topic with conviction, people can get behind you. They are more likely to engage with your content. They know where you stand and they can agree or disagree. Now, this is where it gets convoluted, because what do we see going on in the community? We see with absolute uncertainty on Reddit posts, and over text that these people are confident in their decisions. However, when invited to come onto a Discord server to talk to me man to man so I can hear the conviction, just like this says in their voice, 
That's exactly why I've been asking that, because I want to hear the conviction in their voice. Seeing it over a screen takes nothing and can be easily faked, but faking it over a voice chat would be much harder to do, which is why I imagine no one showed up except one person. Here's an example. Um, this is from David Perlmutter, and he tweets out, As many of you know, I am an avid fisherman and try to spend as much time on the boat as possible. But even when I'm landlocked, when I find myself craving salmon, which is often, I stick to wild-caught fish. Salmon may be the, one of the most healthful foods on the planet, but farm-raised fish is less rich in nutrients and can put you at risk of toxic contamination. And I can't tell a lie. Wild salmon tastes better, much better. Once you run wild, you won't want to come back. And then it says, when it comes to, to fish, go wild. Oh, forgot to read the... Uh... So in the example right here, and this is from Instagram. I'm sorry, I said it was from Twitter. This is from Instagram, my bad. Anyways, in this example, Instagram post, celebrity neurologist and author da uh, Dr. David Perlmutter shares his advice on eating fish with no wiggle room. He doesn't even uh, he doesn't give a long winded uh, recommendation and say long winded. I cannot read today. He doesn't give a long winded recommendation and say sometimes you can eat wild and sometimes it's okay to eat farm raised fish. He is very clear about his recommendation in both the image of the post and the caption. So again, only one option. Trying to get you to think one direction. Stay away from this amplification. Tactic number four is called polarization. We uh, this is what we've seen primarily all year long. It's a. Uh, it's basically pretty similar to uh, controversial tactics. Again, it's, it's meant to to uh, divide and conquer. So basically, um, when you create polarizing social media content, you're essentially drawing a line between us and them, which is what we've seen all year. You know, apes versus hedge funds, AMC versus GME specifically is how it's affecting us. So they're trying to cause wedges, cause division, trying to make us doubt one another. However, we're all in this for the same reason, to get back at the hedge funds and to get you know justice served, accountability held, all that good stuff. So by driving a wedge, we start to forget who we're fighting against because we're fighting against each other. Us would be your target audience, an ideal buyer. Them would be everyone you don't care about. Narratives don't try to appeal to everyone's success in the long run. So you should absolutely be aware of this trick on social media and figure out who the tactic is being geared to falsely support, which in this case, I don't think there is necessarily a uh, one-sided thing here. They're just trying to create division in both communities. So AMC and GME is the easiest example to give of psychological tactic number four, polarization. And lastly, number five, um, something that is happening right now and can be witnessed and observed right now is called frequency illusion. Now this occurs when a narrative is being pushed and then goes with the amplification tactic hand in hand as it gives the illusion of the narrative being everywhere at once on Twitter, Reddit, all the other social media, when in reality, it's being heavily pushed by the enemy. And if they were not doing it, no one would be talking about it, which is exactly what's happening with things like computer share. We've seen it with things in the past before uh, when they tried to create an alter alternative narrative uh, with seller boxing. That, that was a thing for a minute. You just got to be aware that they're going to do anything. Now, again, if you want to come see what I'm talking about, please come check out the Discord. FUDSTOP is the name of it. Discord.gg slash FUDSTOP is all you need to know to, to access it. It's 100% free. And then you can come and look at our uh, public Reddit feed. There's been 1,771 results just for posts with the phrase DRS in it since 10-8-2021. And you'd be shocked if you went through those and saw just how many of them are from bot accounts or paid for accounts. Now, this uh, small clip here, again, this is what the Discord looks like. This is our Reddit feed here for Super Stonk. Uh, there is quite a bit of computer share stuff and other things being pushed. I'm telling you, if you look at it from the outside in, it's apparent. So keep in mind, be critical, be skeptical. It's not, there's not anything wrong about being skeptical, especially if you're in a situation that's going to change your life if played the right way. So remember, rise above the narrative. There's one out there, several, and it's going to get worse. So come on, we're open.